Alright guys, so today I'm going to show you guys how to create a main menu from scratch. As you can see, the last video I made right here, how to make a main menu, it uses just a button and a blur. This time we're going to make a whole full layout, like a background color and everything like that. So let's go. Also guys, link to this plugin will be in the description. It allows the GUIs to scale automatically to all devices. Once you get that plugin, uh, click settings and you can copy my settings right here. You just want to check these two and yeah, let's get right into the video. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is in start a GUI, we're going to add, now I haven't planned this video out, so we're just going to be going from scratch. We're going to add a screen GUI and we're just going to name it to UI, just like that. Uh, let me do capital UI and then we're going to add a frame in there and we're going to rename it main frame, capital M, capital F, just like that. And now you want to go to size and you want to change the offset of uh, X and Y which should be zero automatically since the plugin you want to change those to zero and you want to change both scales to one alright now you can change the color to whatever you want we're going to do a nice darkish gray color uh, let's see what else we can do alright guys so I got a nice dark gray color if you want the the, uh, the RGB code it's 38 38 38 now we're going to add a text label and this will be our title so let's go ahead and put it up here and we can resize put it right here at the top kind of or yeah we'll do it at the top we'll make the background transparency one so we can't see the background let's change the text color to white and we'll do text scaled we'll change the font to Gotham black I like that change the text to welcome to my game we'll do caps on each first letter Welcome to my game. Just like that. Uh, I think that looks very nice. Let's actually size it up a little bit. Center it again. I like it centered right there. And now we can change the name of this text label to title with a capital T. Now inside the main frame, let's add a text button. Size it however you want. Alright, so I got this size right here. Now we're going to add a little effect to this button. So what we're going to do is... Uh, let's go ahead and add a frame into this text button or actually before we do that let's name this button play button capital P capital B just like that let's add a frame to this button and underneath you want to align it like right there and then you want to stretch it across the button and you want to make it like that and now we're gonna make it just a little slight darkest gray alright I'm back sorry about that and now we're going to name this frame shadow with a capital S just like that now we can go ahead and customize the text on the button. We're going to say play. Make it text scaled, Gotham black, just like that. Uh, actually, let's make it, let's see, let's mess around with the colors here. Make it a little grayish color. Yeah, I like that. That looks really cool. Actually, the shadow, I'm going to make it a little bit darker. Uh, I think that looks better. And now we got the play button. Let's go ahead and duplicate it. And now from here you can just make the buttons that you actually want in your game so I'm going to create another button we're going to name this uh, let's say we wanted a settings menu our game or change log or a update log or something like that let's go ahead and do update log uh, or we'll name it update log button just like that and then we'll change the text to update log just like that and there we go. Now let's create one more button for quitting the game. This isn't really uh, need it, but we'll go ahead and do it. Quit. Quit game. Just like that. We'll change the button name to quit game button. This button will just kick the character from the game. And there we go. We got three. We got a main menu with our three buttons. And now let's get into the scripting. All right, guys. So instead of putting a script in each button, we're just going to add a local script to the main frame. We can go ahead and rename the script to main. All right, now let's create our variables. Oops, I'm used to JavaScript. Let's create our variables, and we'll do local play button equals script dot parent dot play button local update log or let's do lowercase update log button equals script dot parent dot update log button, and then we'll do local quit game button equals script dot parent dot quit game button just like that and let's see what else we want the main frame oops hold up local main frame equals script dot parent just like that and now we can do the actual scripts okay 
So what we want to do is let's first work on the play button. When we click this play button, we want this whole entire frame to be not visible, just like that. So to do that, uh, that's a property on the actual frame called visible. We can just check it to disabled. So we're going to do play button dot mouse button one click connect function. So pretty much this is saying when we click this button, run this code right here. So what we're going to run is we're going to do main frame dot visible equals false just like that and now when we click this button this whole entire frame visibility will go to false now update log is going to be a whole entire different frame so to do this we can add a frame into the main frame and you can pretty much create this I'm gonna go ahead and do this I'll be right back alright guys so I went ahead and created this update uh, update log frame as you can see it's separate and let me go ahead and re put it back and I placed it inside the main frame and inside this I have a text label called title I have a, uh, a text button with just the letter X on it uh, let's go ahead and change it to Gotham Black just the letter X on it and I named it close button and I have a, di a little shadow down here it's kinda hard to see but I just added it for the effect so if you wanna go ahead and copy that there you go uh, that's the things you need inside of it you can customize it however you want that's just what I'm doing in case you're following this tutorial step by step I got a close button a title and a shadow now let's go ahead and make this update log not visible. We'll work on it later. Open up the main frame again. And now let's go ahead and let's do the quick game real quick. So we'll do quick game button dot mouse click connect function. And we'll just do game dot players dot local player. And I'm pretty sure it's kick player. Kick player. And then this is gonna be the reason quick game if we go ahead and click play let's try it out okay guys I think it's actually kick instead of kick player let's try that alright boom and as you can see it says you were kicked from this game quick game now that we got the play button in the quick game working let's go ahead and make the update log frame uh, visible when we click that button uh, before we do anything inside of the main frame yeah actually let's do update log button dot mouse click connect a function and let's add a variable quick at the top for the update log frame so we'll do update log frame equals script dot parent dot update log just like that sorry about that uh, now when we click this button when we click this button right here we want the update log visibility be set to true so we'll do update log frame dot visibility equals true just like that and now uh, if we click play and click that it should let us see the update log hopefully if my studio doesn't crash alright here we go if we click update log the update log will now pop up and now as you can see we can't close it though so let's make that button work inside of the update log frame let's add a local script and we'll do the same thing. We'll set some variables. We only need one actually, I'm pretty sure. And that will be local close button. Just like that. And now we can do the actual scripts. And now we can do the close button. Oh wait, we forgot to define that. Equals script dot parent dot close button. Just like that. And now we'll do close button. Same thing. Bounce button one click. Connect function. I'm pretty sure it's mouse button one click. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do. Oh, we need one more variable actually. That'll be local update log frame equals script dot parent. Just like that. And now we'll do update log frame dot visibility equals false. So now let's go ahead and try that out. Click play. and now we got welcome to my game we got the play the update log and the quick game let's say we click update log opens the update log which we can write anything in here and we can close it just like that click play and it will start the game now if you want this menu this menu this main menu not to pop up every time you reset go to the actual UI uh, screen GUI element and change reset on spawn to false if you want this to pop up every time you die and respawn, then set it to true.
If we can add some sound effects, I went ahead and opened up the toolbox and searched for hover button and I found this one. I think that would be a real nice sound for when we hover over these buttons. Let's go ahead and add it. And now let's place this. Uh, let's see, how can we do this? We'll create a folder in the main frame and we'll call this folder sound effects, capital S, capital E. We'll drag in the UI hover and we'll rename it to hover. We'll name it button hover capital B capital H just like that now we got that nice sound effect now what we're going to do is uh, let's go ahead and go into the main script again and now we're going to do for the play button we're going to do uh, actually let me think for a second alright guys so I just found out I was practicing and I found a cool way to do this instead of making a uh, uh, a script for each button and telling it to play that sound we can use for loops so to do this what we'll do is do uh, if you don't really know how to use for loops uh, to loop over iterations of objects you can just look it up if you really want to learn but just follow what I do we'll do for i comma v in pairs and we'll do script dot uh, parent dot or script dot parent get children so what that will do is we'll do do real quick what that will do is it will loop over every object inside of this main frame so it will go through one by one and look at these objects now let's do an if statement to check if the class name is a text button so for each object if v dot class name equal equals text button then so if uh, the text button if the name if the class name is text button then we want to do v dot mouse enter which is the function for when the mouse enters that buttons area uh, then we want to connect that and we want to do uh, script dot parent dot sound effects uh, dot actually let's add let's create a variable for that real quick local sound effects equals script dot parent dot sound effects and now we can just do sound effects dot hover button hover play just like that and that should work so it loops through every object inside of this main frame and it checks if the the class name is a text button so it's gonna go folder class name is folder nope that's not a text button this is a loop local script that's not a text button class name is frame that's not a text button oh this is a text button when our mouse hovers over it play the hover sound let's go ahead and click play and test it out so if we hover over this button you can hear that sound and yeah that's pretty cool and if you want you can use that knowledge I just taught you to also add a uh, a click sound uh, pretty much just go into the script and add if class name then and then you can add the mouse dot click connect and then you can go ahead and find you a click sound effect and add that but I'm not gonna do that for now yeah guys that's how you create your own menu also like I said in the beginning if you're new to my channel and you just found it make sure to subscribe we're almost at 3k which is really awesome guys I wanna say thank you hope this tutorial helped you guys out and yeah I'm out